Hi everyone. My name is Neha Singla. I'm a software developer in Apple Data Platform Notebook team. Today, we're going to talk about streamlined data science workflow development using Jupyter Notebook and Airflow. And I have Satish with me. Uh, my name is Satish Kumar. I'm a front-end uh, developer on the Apple Data Platform team. Today, we are going to cover these topics. We'll give you a brief overview of Jupyter Notebooks. We'll spend some time on explaining what is data science workflow and current pain points for data scientists. And then we'll explain how we have streamlined data science workflow followed by a live demo. Last, we'll deep dive into the architecture of how we have used Airflow to build a workflow of Jupyter Notebooks. To start with Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter is an ecosystem. The screenshot on the right side is of Jupyter Lab, which is essentially an in-browser ID uh, which provides a rich user experience for various data activities. Uh, Jupyter is language agnostic. Here, users can come, they create notebooks, and they can use uh, any uh, runtime to power their notebooks. Uh, Jupyter allows uh, data engineers to prototype their experiment based on their needs, um, as well as allowing data scientists and uh, machine learning scientists to explore uh, and uh, run machine learning experiment by using interactive environments in Jupyter Lab. Let's take a look at the data science workflow. As you can see in a data science, uh, there are quite a few technology and needs in play. Uh, as a data scientist, you need to deal with different data sources like uh, S3, Hadoop, uh, GCP, uh, Cassandra, etc. Different data scientists use different languages and libraries as they're most comfortable with. And if you're running your experiment in a cloud environment, be it on-prem, Kubernetes, or Amazon EKS, or GKE, data scientists need to deal with different compute configurations. Yeah. And uh, for machine learning experiment, they use their different toolings like Qflow, PyTorch, at play, and data scientists need to use different configuration for machine learning tooling as well. They need to share and collaborate with each other to prototype their experiments. Let's see uh, how data scientists are using Jupyter in their overall workflow. As you see on the left side, they use Jupyter for interactive experiment. They, they prototype, they collaborate with each other, they, they do some bug fixing and reiterate the experiment. As you see on the right side, they again use Jupyter to share the artifacts with other stakeholders. But if you see, there's a disconnect and users typically leave Jupyter when they have to productionize their experiment uh, on larger data set. They, they reach out to platform engineer or SRE who help them to bundle their code, libraries, artifacts together, help them create a pipeline, uh, monitor their pipeline, and they have to do that each time whether there's a change in the experiment. Now, uh, by looking at the data science workflow, there are many pain points they go through. Data scientists, as you have seen, they use Jupyter in an interactive environment. They, they, there are no, multiple notebook files which they use and that gets buried into their own system. Now, for productionizing their experiment, they have to talk to a different engineer to promote a separate means to promote their code from workspace to production. And if an experiment has to be performed on ad hoc basis or an experiment has to run, let's say, for a different compute configuration or on a different data set, that experiment, uh, for that, the re they have to reproduce the same experiment. And if they have to do any bug fixes, they'll, they'll have to repeat that experiment with the included bug and, and its fixes. And large-scale experiment, Jupyter is not great in running large-scale experiment because disconnectivity during session can lead to output loss or user has to re-execute the whole file. Debugging a failed pipeline is a pain process because they have to reach to other engineer and then they have to manually get that code from pipeline into their notebook and then fix that code and then propagate back any fixes from the notebook into their pipeline. Ultimately, we want to fix these pain points for data, science, data scientists and the data science workflow by using Jupyter. For that, we have to take Jupyter beyond interactive use cases, and we are, we are supporting Jupyter for long-running sessions and for regular pipelines, which runs as a scheduled interval. For that, we are introducing notebook workflows. 
where users can create ML and data workflows, where they can define a notebook which does the data preparation, followed by a chain notebook which does ML training. And now, I'll hand it over to Satish to demonstrate the notebook workflow with the live demo. Uh, hello, everyone. So before we get into the live demos, I just want to set some context, like uh, what we are going to do. Uh, so in the screenshot, uh, we, you see that this is a typical uh, ML uh, workflow so where we need to uh, get some uh, data from somewhere and then clean up the data and then use the data to train an uh, LLM model and finally evaluate uh, uh, the model for its uh, accuracy. So this is a, a, a workflow is actually scheduled uh, in uh, an Airflow and each uh, task uh, that you see, the boxes here, uh, is an airflow task, so which is basically containing the uh, uh, notebook files, uh, kernel runtimes with uh, secrets and other configurations uh, uh, attached to it. So the integration of uh, uh, work, uh, airflows and uh, Jupyter Lab has actually enabled us to support the non-interactive use cases like flows and scheduled notebooks. So let's try to recreate this workflow in Jupyter Lab. So the end goal is actually to train an LLM model uh, and then use it to run as a sentiment analysis on customer reviews about iPhone uh, products. So let's go to Jupyter Lab. So quickly look at the files that we'll be using for creating this workflow. So first one is the uh, Spark ingestion data. So as you can see here, we have some uh, PySpark uh, code uh, to download a, a sample ELP dataset from Hugging Face and then load it into our iceberg table. And for the next task, we'll use this file. So this uses a Scala Spark to clean up the data and generate new features. So if you look at it here, like it is just cleaning up the data. The sample data set has like a customer review ratings ranging from zero to five. But for our use case, we'll just simplify it. It's like a one and zero. So one is for a good review and zero is for a not so good review. And then like we'll use this cleaned up data to fine tune an LLM. So in this case, we will use BERT, so which is a pre-trained model on uh, English uh, language. Uh, and then like, so the, in addition, like this notebook has been like parameterized with paper mill operator. So Neha will go through in detail, like what that is. So basically like we want to uh, change the model name that we want to use with this uh, notebook during our workflow creation. And finally, we will use uh, the evaluate LLM notebook file to uh, test the model by feeding some sample data to it and then see like if our model is able to predict whether the uh, review is a good review or a bad review. So imagine that uh, running this experimentation without a workflow. So we need to like run uh, each and every notebook file one after the other. And we also need to remember the order in which we are actually executing. And uh, as Neha mentioned, this will be particularly challenging when you are data set is really large because you need to be like present all the time to see like whether there is a disconnectivity issue, then you need to restart experimentation over and over again. Let's see like how workflows is actually going to help us to simplify this one. <coughs> to get started, like we will open the notebook workflows here. We create a new workflow and then give it a name. Let's give me like sentiment analysis. And then I'm typing with one hand, so please bear. And then finally, like we choose a compute. So compute is basically any uh, Kubernetes namespace where our workflows are, uh, will be executed uh, once we create the uh, uh, workflow. So we see the details about like where it is going to be uh, executed and when it is going to be executed and who are uh, going to be notified and all these things uh, that you see in a typical workflow. And now we have the canvas where we can start adding the tasks. So I'll drag and drop uh, files here. First, I want to start with the uh, data ingestion uh, followed by uh, feature generation. So we could uh, create the dependencies between the tasks by connecting the, these tasks. And then like we use uh, the uh, LLM uh, notebook. So basically, since the notebook is already like parameterized, I can change the parameter uh, for one of the notebooks to use uh, what model I want. So the default one is using a BERT uh, base case and I will use a bird uncased for this one. So one notebook with two different parameters uh, to use a different uh, models. And then once the feature generation is completed, I want to run fine tuning. And then finally like use a, a fine tuned model to evaluate uh, uh, how it is performing. So now the workflow is created, we can save it. And uh, if you see, like uh, in the fine tuning model, like we are using a Kubeflow operator to create a PyTorch uh, job. 
uh, to distribute the model training across uh, GPUs. So within a single workflow, we are using so many different uh, languages. We have Spark runtime, Scala runtime, Qflow, all these things. And uh, we are able to execute all this within a single flow. So this workflow can be like uh, executed over and over again with schedules. Like it is reproducible and also like I'll show you like if there are any issues like how to fix it. So now the workflow is created, I can go ahead and then deploy it. So with few clicks, I was able to create a workflow of a data application from a bunch of interactive notebook files. So once the workflow is completed, the task will start running eventually. But in once the Kubernetes pods and everything has spun up. So in the interest of time, like let's go back to a workflow that I've already created that has some results. And then I'll show you like how we can view the results of that. So it's going to take some time to actually deploy and everything. So while it is going on, I can actually go back to the list. So here you can see the list of all the workflows that I've created and the status of those workflows and the schedules like when this will be run. So for now I will have, I have all the workflows to be executed immediately. So this is using the airflow at once trigger. And also the actions, like whether I want to keep the workflow running or pass it or uh, delete it. So let's uh, take a look at the, uh, the runs for this view, uh, workflow. So when you go to the runs uh, tab, it shows list of all the uh, runs um, for this workflow. So to look at a completed workflow, we'll choose this one. So here, this uh, shows that the workflow has completed uh, successfully with all the tasks uh, uh, completed and we see the time it took for each of the tasks. I can view the uh, details about the task by selecting this one. So here we have like once the task is completed, it produces artifacts like uh, the output of uh, the notebook uh, execution. So which can be like uh, downloaded or shared with others or like it can be like previewed within uh, our uh, workflows. So here we see that uh, we are going, uh, we actually tra uh, evaluated a couple of uh, models that we have uh, fine tuned with our uh, uh, data. And uh, here we are doing some uh, sentiment analysis on some sample uh, data. So we feed it to the fine-tuned model. So the model, yeah, both the models are able to actually predict that this is a, a good review based on the star ratings, like one is good and zero is bad review. And we should see the efficiency score between uh, these two uh, models. And similarly for uh, the bad, not so good review, uh, it is able to predict that correctly. So we have achieved all these things like within the single uh, workflow. So we started with data ingestion, loading it to into a iceberg table, and then use the table again to actually generate new features and feed that into a fine tuning model and use the Qflow operator to distribute the model training across the GPUs. And we uploaded the model to our S3 and finally used that model. We evaluate like how it is performing. Now we can see the results and everything. So this results can be like shared with others as you see, like there is a notification, a Slack notification available. So we can uh, uh, share that uh, uh, at the end of every uh, run. And any system is not like a free from failures, right? There could be like failures due to whether it is a code issue or it is like issue with resource allocation kind of things. So like, let's see like how we can actually find the failures and then fix it. So this, uh, I simulated an error for one of the tasks. So this was a code issue. And when we select uh, the task, it shows like it failed and the snippet of uh, the failure. And we also have like uh, the links where we can go to the logs to see like what happened with the runs and all these things. To quickly fix the error, we can actually select the task. And if it was actually a code issue, we can go ahead and then open the notebook, fix like whatever it is it was, and then select the file again, upload it. So whenever we create a task, we are actually creating a snapshot of the uh, file. We are not actually referencing the file, we are creating a snapshot. So that's why I have to uh, upload the uh, source code again. So once I uh, upload, uh, update my tasks, I can resubmit it for uh, uh, running the workflow again. So when you do a rerun, it's not going to run all the uh, tasks. So the tasks which are already completed will be left as is. Only the failure task will be rerun. So we use uh, Airflow features for these things to skip a few tasks and then run uh, certain tasks. So here, this will actually trigger uh, running uh, the workflow again for only the failed task. So once the failed task uh, is actually completed, the downstream uh, task will start uh, executing. So as you can see, like uh, with few clicks, I'm able to create a powerful data application even for larger uh, data sets. And uh, I'm able to share the results with the others, view the 
uh, output of the results and then fix the failures all within a, a Jupyter lab. So this is a big uh, win for productivity. So that's how easy it is to create uh, workflows. Uh, with that, I'll uh, let Neha to actually explain like how we have achieved uh, uh, this. What in Neha? Thank you, Satish. Now, since we have seen the uh, the demo of notebook workflows, uh, I think let's deep dive into the architecture. I think before that, uh, the question arises: Why we chose Airflow? As as you all know, that uh, Airflow is a general purpose, widely used orchestration system where you can define each task and denote, and they are denoted as an operator. In Jupyter, uh, to bridge the gap between interactive and scheduled workflows, there was a need to schedule and execute the task of Jupyter Notebook, and Airflow fits the best for that use case. Yeah. Along with that, Airflow has a great uh, support for extendability and customization. For running Jupyter Notebooks, we have built we have built our own custom uh, paper mill operator, which we are using for uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Airflow has great monitoring cap capabilities, as you've seen in the demo, where if, uh, you can see the uh, the failed task and skip a task while rerunning or rerun the whole DAG together. So we are leveraging uh, all Airflow capabilities, monitoring capabilities, and scheduling capabilities for running workflow Jupyter Notebooks. Last thing, Airflow has a huge community. So, so all these abilities provided by Airflow made it the best choice for Jupyter Notebooks. Diving deep more into the architecture. So Paper Mail uh, is an operator for parameterizing and executing Jupyter Notebooks. To do that, Airflow has a native support for a Paper Mill operator. You can define your task with Paper Mill operator and uh, Airflow will, at schedule time, will pick that operator and run your task. When we started, there was a few limitation in Paper Mill operator that the Paper Mill operator was tightly coupled with Python runtime. As Jupyter is language agnostic, where users can come and would like to run their notebook in any runtime, be it uh, Scala, Python, or any big processing engine like Spark, uh, uh, that was not supported when we started. Um, also, uh, a paper mill operator uh, runs your task locally, so scaling it in a cloud environment was not possible. Uh, different versions of uh, Different users would like to use different versions of the same library. Uh, due to local nature of paper mill operator, uh, multi-tenancy was not supported. As part of this PR, uh, we have uh, enhanced paper mill operator to overcome few of those limitations. We have added support for multiple runtimes. Now, paper mill operator can connect to any kernel, which is managed externally by any other system in any other cloud environment. And now it can, the, the kernel could be any kernel, be it Scala, Python, or Spark, or Kubeflow. It's language agnostic. With this PR, now paper mill operators support remote kernels. To schedule the task, again, across multiple runtimes and across multiple clusters, we are leveraging our own in-house data pipeline service, which is built on top of Airflow. It provides an API spec where you define your schedule, your operator, your task definition, and internally, it converts that pipeline definition into an Airflow DAG. It, it has a version control, and it allows users a flexibility to deploy a specific version of a pipeline on any cluster which is Airflow enabled. And it also provides has a capability to run your pipeline across multiple Kubernetes clusters. We have a great talk provided by our partner team, which is referenced in this slide on data pipeline. It also has support for Airflow Operator Marketplace. Our paper mill operator, we have registered on this platform to use it for running Jupyter Notebooks. Now let's see at the actual execution of notebook using Airflow. So at schedule time, when Airflow spins up the worker port, it invokes the paper mill operator, which is configured uh, by user. And uh, this operator is launches an on-demand kernel, uh, which is which can be in any cloud environment. And then uh, this operator uh, downloads the version notebook file, it connects to the kernel, and then executes the code by connecting to that kernel. And once everything is done, it sends the notification, be it in form of email or Slack, and then provides them the link of the output file as an HTML preview or a notebook file which users can download and preview it. Giving a little bit overview on Jupyter Scheduler, um, this is an uh, uh, open source extension. 
um, used by uh, users to run a single notebook on Jupyter. Um, it has a great UI which uh, support uh, where user can use, uh, say, see multiple, uh, all the notebook jobs, uh, view job run history and download artifacts in multiple formats. Our, our offering is, is using the similar Jupyter scheduler where we are using Airflow as our scheduling engine and using creating DAG of multiple notebook. Jupyter has a great architecture where, where you can easily add a new plug plugin. Essentially everything in Jupyter is a, a plugin. So for, for dynamically creating DAG of Jupyter notebooks, we have added our own for workflow plugin which which talks to other plugins like file sharing, file browser, and, and helps users to create notebook workflows. In future, we are collaborating with open source and open sourcing the workflow extension. We are having a weekly sync with the community. We are inviting collaborators. So if you're interested in any part of Jupyter or learning to collaborate, feel free to join Jupyter meetings. And there's a reference to the calendar here. On features, we are adding to support event-driven notebook workflows and sharing of workflows and not keeping it tied to a single user. And that's all we had for today. Thank you.